Hello everyone, welcome to Power Electronics Tutorials. In this video, I am going to discuss the BJT Base Drive Control Techniques. Lastly, we move on to Anti-Saturation Base Drive Control Technique. In high voltage BJTs, the amount of storage time is a function of minority carrier concentration in the base region just before the turn off and fault time is a function of base drive current turn off characteristic. The storage time can be decreased by minimizing the concentration of minority charge carriers in the base region. This can be accomplished by opening the transistor in soft saturation or quasi saturation rather than hard saturation. One of the techniques that can be used to achieve this is the Baker's clamp. A typical circuit arrangement for the clamping action for the Baker's clamp circuit is as shown in the figure 5 here. In the Baker's clamp circuit, the collector to emitter voltage is clamped to a predetermined level and the collector current is given by applying the KVL to the collector emitter loop which is given by the equation IC equals VCC minus of VCM divided by RC where VCM is the clamping voltage and VCM should be greater than the VCE saturation. The base current IB which is sufficient enough to drive the transistor into hard saturation can be obtained by applying KVL to the base emitter loop. Therefore, the base current IB will be equal to current I1 and this can be obtained by applying KVL to the base emitter loop. So, IB is given by the equation VB minus VD1 minus VBE divided by RB. Once you find the value of IB, you can write an equation for the collector current IC because they are related by the equation IC is equals to beta IB. Please note in the absence of diode D2, the collector current equals the load current and therefore we have written IC equals to IL which is equals to beta IB. Once the collector current starts to rise, the transistor is said to be turned on. Once the transistor turns on, the collector current starts to rise and clamping takes place because now the diode D2 will be far best. The collector to emitter voltage is now given by VBE, VD1 and VD2. In the equation form, this will be VCE equals VBE plus VD1 minus VD2. In a very similar fashion, we can write an expression for the load current IL. Please note it is now different from the collector current IC because the diode D2 is turned on and this in fact is our clamping diode. So the equation for IL is obtained by applying KVL to the collector emitter circuit which is given by IL equals VCC minus VCE divided by RC. Now I will substitute equation 8 for VCE here and therefore the load current equation is VCC minus VBE minus VD1 plus VD2 whole divided by RC. Let us now once again write the equation for collector current which is still the same which is beta IB. But now the value of IB has changed because IB in the presence of diode is equal to I1 minus of I2 and I2 is equals to IC minus of IL. So the collector current is given by the equation IC equals to beta IB which is equals to beta into I1 minus I2. But I2 is equals to IC minus IL, therefore IC here is beta multiplied by I1 minus IC plus IL. After simplifying this, we will obtain the value for the collector current as beta divided by 1 plus beta multiplied by I1 plus IL. Now, in a very important note, when I compare the RHS of equation 11, which is the collector current after clamping, with the RHS of equation 7 which is also the collector current equation but before clamping I will find that the collector current after clamping has reduced compared to that of the before clamping. This is very important because the collector current is now clamped so that the transistor does not enter hard saturation. In fact that is the overall idea behind using diode D2. By connecting diode D2 across the base and collector, we make sure that the collector current is clamped to a predetermined value so that the transistor will not enter hard saturation and will only work in the quasi saturation which is also called as the soft saturation. Now, 
Having understood the importance of clamping, let us understand what are the requirements for clamping. For clamping to be successful, the voltage across the diode D1 should be greater than the voltage across the diode D2. If we have used exact same diodes in place of diodes D1 and D2, then you can increase the voltage across diode D1 by simply connecting another diode in series with diode D1. Also, the load resistance RC must satisfy the condition given by beta IB, which is nothing but IC, greater than IL. Now, I will substitute for IL from one of my previous equations, precisely equation 9 here. And before I substitute, I will take the denominator that is RC towards the LHS here. So, beta IB multiplied by RC is greater than VCC minus VBE minus VD1 plus VD2. Comparing equation 13, which is nothing but the equation for the collector current IC with the collector current equation before clamping, we find that the numerator in equation 5, that is before clamping, is considerably higher than after clamping. Therefore, we now state that the clamping action reduces the collector current while almost eliminating the storage time. This will provide a faster turn on time for our transistor. Right, so that is about a brief discussion on the base drive control techniques of a BJT. Thank you.